As Egypt collapsed into turmoil this summer, a key activist group tried to protect the revolution they'd helped bring about. We'd followed the April the 6th movement in 2011. We went back as opposing factions split the country in two. In January 2011, the Egyptian people came together to overthrow a dictator. A group of young, liberal activists, the April 6 movement, was among those at the heart of the revolution. They were hungry for democracy and eager for reform. From behind the scenes, people in power watched as they helped mobilize mass demonstrations in Cairo streets. We witnessed their euphoria in Tahir Square, as Hosni Mubarak was toppled. And in 2012, we saw them start to work with the new Muslim Brotherhood government of President Mohamed Morsi. But Egypt's unity was illusory. Competing groups had continued to battle for ownership of the revolution and argue bitterly over the constitution. Others were becoming alarmed at the new administration's authoritarian tendencies. In June this year, divisions came to a head. Once again, Tahrir Square became the focus of flag-waving protesters. But this time, they wanted to oust an elected leader. On July the 3rd, after three tense days, the army intervened. Morsi was deposed, and an interim president, Adli Mansour, was sworn in. Morsi supporters called it a coup and staged counter-demonstrations. It wasn't long before they clashed with those happy to see him go. And it left many wondering where exactly the April 6 movement stood. Having helped bring down one president, would its activists accept the overthrow of his democratically chosen successor? We returned to Cairo to follow the group over five dramatic weeks, as Egyptians wrestled with an uneasy choice which of the bitterly opposed factions to support. For most in April 6, the choice was already made. Three days after the military takeover, they were making their feelings about Morsi very plain. The march had been called to denounce violence. The previous evening, clashes between pro- and anti-Morsi protesters had left 36 people dead. But tempers were still running high. When we last met Zizou Abdu in July 2012, he'd been leading a class in political activism. <laughs> Zizou and many of these protesters had once fought security forces in these very streets. But today, they shared a platform in opposition to the Muslim Brotherhood. <laughs> Their shields carried images of friends killed during Morsi's tenure. Entering Tahrir Square, they stood with Egyptians who expressed solidarity with the army. <laughs> that evening, members of April 6 met to discuss their next move, keen to make clear why they believed that the army's actions had been necessary.
Across town, Ahmed Meir, one of the founders of April 6, returned from a meeting with Egypt's newly appointed leaders. We last met Ahmed in 2012. He'd been invited to join an assembly charged with devising Egypt's new constitution. He'd been among a number of non-Muslim Brotherhood delegates, but over subsequent months, the others dropped out. They feared that an Islamist agenda was taking hold. Many of Ahmed's comrades had urged him to quit too, and he was left with a difficult decision. Ultimately, he had no choice but to withdraw. It was a key turning point for April 6, a group which has always seen itself as one of the guardians of Egypt's revolution. At the start of this year, its activists returned to the streets in protest to Morsi's administration, a government they helped bring into being. But this was not without cost. Several of them were arrested and one was killed. إن في عضو عندنا في 6 أبريل تم ضربه بالنار استشهد في أحد المسيرات المعترضة على أداء الرئيس الجمهورية فضرب هو جيكا طفل عنده 17 سنة يعني. Across Egypt, anti-Morsi sentiment then hardened as groups, including April 6, combined under an umbrella movement called Tamarod or Rebel. Its aim was to mobilize public opinion and petition the president to resign. شاركنا في جمع توقعات لحملة تمرد جمعنا حوالي 2 مليون توقيع تقريبا في اوضة تلاقيها كاملة هنا وفي المقرات الثانية كلها توقعات يعني If the Tamarod campaign had strengthened the army's hand in moving against Morsi out on the streets the consequences of the July 3rd coup were now unfolding The deposed president's supporters were mobilizing too and both sides strove to show that they had a popular mandate the following day, anti-Morsi protesters gathered in Cairo's main squares to voice their support for the military and its chief, Defense Minister Fateh el-Sisi. The Lazar Hoods are color, regarding people. They are terrorist people. Thank you, thank you, great our army. Thank you, Sisi. Thank you, Sisi. Thank you, Sisi. Said that the CC, the, or the head force, that he's the one who pushed us to do this, and it is, uh, it is not right. All the Egyptians went in the street. We don't need the Brotherhood. As the demonstrations continued throughout the night, events were monitored from the April 6 headquarters. <laughs> بنساعد على تأكيد أو بنأكد على عزل مرسي بالإرادة الشعبية وليس بإرادة القوات المسلحة. Using techniques that served them so well in 2011, April 6 reinforced this message through social media. بنحاول مع الشباب إن إحنا نرسم كل التظاهرات الموجودة. بنوثق بنوثق كل التظاهرات اللي حصلت في مصر النهارده النهارده احنا خايفين ان يحصل اي اشتباك في ميدان التحرير او في مناطق مختلفه في مصر بنخوف كله ان في ممكن جماعات زي الجماعه الاسلاميه او جماعات ارهابيه تحاول ان هي تربك المشهد بتفجيرات او بتدمير. But when violence did break out, it wasn't in Tahrir Square. Early next morning, at a protest outside Cairo's Republican Guards Officers Club, Supporters of Mohamed Morsi were fired upon. 
The army said later that Morsi supporters had tried to storm the building, believing the former president was held inside. The Muslim Brotherhood claimed protesters had been attacked during morning prayers. What is clear is that government troops killed over 50 people. The ranks of the many injured filling this makeshift field hospital. But few of these images were shown on Egypt's state media, which chose instead to run reports about men firing at soldiers. The army said later that three of its personnel had been killed. Back at April 6 headquarters, activists followed events on television. Two years earlier, claims by the security forces would have been met with skepticism. Now, they were given a more sympathetic hearing. I see that the movements of Mohamed Morsi in the wild areas are necessary to bring them to the end of this one. They have been able to bring them to the movements of the movements more than once, and they have been able to bring them to the movement of the movement of the movement يعملوا صورة إنه هناك فوضى في مصر وإنه وإنه صورة 30 يونيو هي انقلاب وخلافه اللي حصل في يوم الحرس الجمهوري طبعا حدث مؤسف إحنا مع حق معي الرئيس في الاعتصام ولكن كان في ناس معهم سلاح دليل إن في ضابط جيش أكثر من ضابط جيش مال في في هذه الواقعة Following the massacre, Muslim Brotherhood supporters had flocked to a mosque at nearby Raba al Adawiya. Where many of the injured had been treated. As the month of Ramadan began, the surrounding area quickly became a focal point for a pro Morsi sit in. The sit in began to attract ever larger numbers. As most attending were now fasting during daylight hours, food was donated and kitchens were set up to feed the crowd at day's end. We help to make the iftar for one million and a half Muslim today. I think this coming in Genesis record or something like this. I hope to do something like this. With Morsi supporters determined to stay put until their deposed president was reinstated, the area quickly took on the look of a semi-permanent camp. Although the atmosphere was peaceful, away from Rabah, the army claimed that weapons were being secretly stockpiled. This was refuted by people who saw themselves as the real victims. If you go and search here in any place, they don't find any knife, they don't find any army, they don't find any gun, they don't find any arbaje. What's the damage in arbaje we don't buy? We come in here in this, not violent. What's the army doing with us? That is the question I'm asking to see. see. What are you doing with your people? Another confrontation was brewing. As the sit-in entered its third week, Defence Minister Fatah el-Sisi addressed the nation. Two years earlier, Egyptian security forces had been fighting pro-democracy activists. Now, a general was calling for mass demonstrations. That Friday, Sisi's call was answered. Hundreds of thousands came out into the streets. The security forces had been given a green light to clear Rabah, and they wasted little time in using it. The next morning, a ferocious assault was unleashed on the Rabah perimeter, one of the most deadly events involving security forces since 2011. The numbers of wounded soon overwhelmed doctors at the Campsfield Hospital. Over 80 people were killed, but Morsi supporters still refused to leave the sit-in. April 6 activists were rattled by the army's ruthlessness. They'd supported Morsi's overthrow, but were wary of endorsing violence. They hadn't responded to General Sisi's call. They were equally infuriated by the Brotherhood's determination to keep protesting. There 
في سواء الفض او في التعامل مع بعض الصمات فالامر بجد معقد دلوقتي وصعب احنا حاولنا نكلم تاني جماعه الاخوان المسلمين فبنتكلم معاهم اللي هو خلاص بقى يعني ادركوا ان الشعب رافضكم وادركوا ان الشعب يعني مش بيحبكم وقد يحصل الى حد الكراهيه اذا كنتم انتم سياسيين يعني فابداوا فكروا في الخطوه القادمه وابداوا في كيفيه الخروج باقل خسائر ممكنه But no one at Rabah was paying much attention to April 6. Protesters were now reinforcing the approaches to the sit-in and paying homage to the sacrifice of those who had died so far. Undeterred by the fierce summer heat, Protesters were turning the camp into a mini city. The numbers swelled before the dust prayer, where memories of the recent killings resonated. My student Mahmoud Saeed Ramadan was killed. He did nothing for the for the CC or for any other. He just was fighting for his. Future. We are peaceful here, peaceful without any weapon here. Mm -hmm. You see? This is my foot. This is my foot. This is my foot. Yes. No guns. This is, no guns. This is for play. This is for play. But not all was well inside Rabat. Though the majority of people were protesting peacefully, Amnesty International published claims that some pro government supporters had been tortured inside the sit in. Although denied by the Brotherhood, the report was seized upon by the authorities as further justification for the camp's breakup. In an attempt to calm things down, April 6 volunteered to search Rabah for any wrongdoing, but the activists were not well received. I went to the Wafdi Al-Hui to see the situation in the middle of the village. For the people who say that they are the friends of the Islamic people or the Islamic people, they try to get away from us. And for the people who were talking about that we are going to say that we are going to kill them. But even as Muhammad Adel was being turned away from Rabah, his uncle, an active Brotherhood member, was making his way in. The country's deep divisions were now turning members of the same family against each other. Shunned by the Brotherhood and now increasingly criticized by other secular groups, April 6's leadership tried to make their position clear. بالتأكيد اه طبعا مع الثورة مع 30 يونيو نرفض عودة الإخوان نرفض عودة نظام مرسي في نفس الوقت هنسعى للتعايش ما ينفعش أن يكون في مجتمع انقسام وكراهية فاحنا بالتأكيد أي محاولة إعادة استقرار لمصر أي محاولة عدالة انتقالية وكل من يحا... كل من أخطأ يحاسب وكل من يستخدم العنف يحاسب But with Egypt's divisions now so entrenched it was proving difficult to hold the middle ground Calls for reconciliation and invoking the spirit of 2011 were all well and good. But by standing between two fiercely belligerent camps, April 6 ran the risk of splitting its own ranks. Many activists still had bitter memories from times protesting against the Brotherhood and the consequences they'd suffered. في هذا الوقت ثلاث أعضاء من حركة شباب 6 إبريل أنا كنت واحد من ضمن الثلاث أعضاء دول اعتقلنا داخل سجن العقرب 33 يوم بدأ يحصل معانا يعني ضغط نفسي ضغط نفسي وعصبي. Others believe that April 6 had squandered a golden opportunity to change Egypt for the better. Mohamed Tarek joined the group in 2011 as it fought for the downfall of Hosni Mubarak. Disillusioned, he left in 2012. 
He now joined the rubber sit-in. But Mohammed's reservations about April 6 were aimed more at its leadership than the group's core ideals. رغم كل شيء انا احسبهم عندهم حس وطني اول حاجه ان هم يعملوها انهم يبقوا مطالبهم مطالب الشعب مش مطالب السياسيين كنت اتمنى برضو ان هو احمد ماهر يبعد شويه عن علاقته ببعض المنظمات في الخارج يعني يبقى ولاءه الكامل لمصر it was a familiar criticism in 2011 working with pro democracy activists from abroad had proved useful to Ahmed. Now, he hoped it would do so again. In a bid to end the rubber sit-in, which had lasted over a month, a number of foreign politicians had flown into Cairo. It's a meeting with uh, John McCain to talk about what happens, opinion, how we can stop violence, solve the problem. So, uh, we talk. But the time for talking was running out. The new government believed it had a clear mandate to use force against the rubber protesters. And behind the scenes, they were gearing up to use it. As it became clear that neither of the opposing factions would give in, April 6's isolation increased. The group was losing its influence. Being able to understand both sides of the argument was no longer enough. Few were heeding such warnings. On August the 14th, with Ramadan over, the authorities launched their last and most devastating attack. Bulldozers ploughed through the stores and tents, even crushing a makeshift mall. Some protesters fought back, but they stood little chance against the government's overwhelming force. The exact death toll has still to be determined, but estimates vary from 400 to well over 1,000. Clashes erupted around the country, and the government declared a state of emergency. Protests and violence continued, while Rabah was left smouldering. Former April 6 member, Mohammed Tarek, was shot three times during the attack. He was lucky to survive. Five tumultuous weeks had left April 6's appetite for democracy intact. But its unity had been threatened, and the ambitions of 2011 were still not fulfilled. <laughs> الثورة هي اللي هتنجح في الآخر مهما دخل أي حد يحاول يكون لي مصالح معينة لا الثورة هي اللي هتنجح فاحنا بنثق أن الثورة هتنجح وهدفها هتحقق